In Seoul, Dr. Jisoo is doing crazy experiments with animals to cure his daughter, who is only staying alive because of her father's machines. Mutated animals run all over the lab while Jisoo kills his assistant to silence him and use him to test his latest serum. At that moment the authorities storm into the lab to arrest him for having killed over a hundred people with his experiments, and when Jisoo injects himself with his serum to prove he's made a big discovery, he's shot down. Suddenly an earthquake hits the area and the entire room starts shaking. Outside all the buildings in the city start going down and soon the lab begins crumbling as well. The authorities immediately run away to save themselves, but Jisoo stays to protect his daughter. The earthquake eventually destroys the entire area, only leaving a desolate wasteland where the city used to be. People begin living together in small villages while foraging for resources, which are very scarce. Water in particular is a problem because it rarely rains. Leaving the settlements is a terrible idea because there are desperate people out there willing to kill for food, so only a few armed men dare to go out to hunt. Three years after the earthquake, Jiwon is out looking for something to hunt with his bow. He suddenly hears a growling noise and finds a crocodile, so he hides behind a car and lights his arrow on fire to then shoot the beast on its head. The crocodile squirms in pain for a few seconds and goes down. Excited, Jiwon moves to retrieve his prey, but the crocodile suddenly wakes up and comes after him. Jiwon's normal arrows can't pierce the crocodile's skin, so he rushes to hide inside the car, only for the crocodile to insert its head through the window, trying to bite him. At that moment the beast is pulled back by Namsan, who uses a machete to quickly decapitate the crocodile. Afterward the guys take the crocodile back to their village, where they cut it up in small meat chunks and trade them for other supplies. Suna and her grandmother Yansu come to pick up some meat too and Jiwon tries to flirt with the girl, but he isn't successful. The quiet morning is suddenly interrupted by a violent gang arriving in an ugly car that crashes against someone's tent. The gang members explain they're looking for a criminal and show a very bad drawing, but nobody knows anything. The criminals decide to capture random villagers that they think look like the drawing, causing a man to try to defend himself. He grabs the gangster by the neck, only for another criminal to cut his arm to make him drop his friend. Next the gangster tries hitting on Suna and when she turns him down, he grabs her by her hair and pushes Yansu to the ground. Jiwon soon comes to their defense and a fight ensues. He manages to knock down the first guy but soon the rest of the gang surrounds him and starts beating him up together. Eventually Namsan gets tired of watching and cuts in, expertly beating up all the criminals in just a few moves. A short guy tries to hurt his leg, but for Namsan it's a tickle. Then a guy tries hitting him with a pipe, so Namsan quickly overpowers him and pushes him on his meat table, demanding information. The gangster explains they work for a man named Tiger, whose name Namsan recognizes. He also notices that the gangsters have clean water, so they explain they got it from the only apartment building still standing, where a group of survivors have created a successful self-sufficient community. When the gangsters hear Namsan's name, they immediately recognize him and run away. Sometime later, a group of well-dressed recruiters shows up at the village. They come from the apartment building, and they're looking for families with children in their teens to protect them because children are the future. Suna only accepts to leave for the sake of her grandma. By the time night falls, Suna and Yansu are still walking toward the apartment building with the recruiters. When they see someone moving in the dark they rush to hide, but by sending a message with their lantern they confirm it's other recruiters. Both groups continue walking together and Suna befriends a girl from another village called Ju Yi. Eventually Yansu's fragile body can't walk anymore and she falls, the same happens to another kid's old father. A recruiter announces there's a medical station nearby, so they can leave the old people there to rest and the recruiters will bring them to the apartment building later. Just a few minutes later, the group finds a few cars waiting for them and Suna gets confused because if these vehicles have always been so close, they could have just carried the old people here. Sergeant Kwan dismisses her comments and Suna notices a weird wart behind his ear. Meanwhile Yansu and the old man are taken to a chasm left by the earthquake, where the old man is pushed off the edge and Yansu gets stabbed. This is seen by Namsan and Jiwon, who are out hunting. As soon as the recruiters hear them they open fire, so Namsan moves fast and kills them both in seconds, but to his shock, both men just stand back up and start fighting him. Jiwon gets the attention of an enemy by running away and makes him smash his head on cement when he tries to catch him, yet the guy is still alive. It's then revealed these men also have the wart behind their ears. With a plan in mind, Jiwon keeps on fighting and gets his opponent to walk right into one of his animal traps, capturing him. However the guy just uses a knife to free his foot and goes after Jiwon again, but when he's about to kill him, he's brought down by Yun Ho, who finally kills the guy for good by decapitating him. Meanwhile Namsan continues to fight the other guy and impales him on a metal rod, but the man just jumps off and tries attacking Namsan from behind. Yun Ho throws a knife at him to slow him down, then Namsan uses the same knife to decapitate him. Afterward, Jiwon and Namsan give Yansu a proper burial and Yun Ho explains she's trying to reach the apartment building to save the residents and her subordinates. She used to be part of the Air Force and her team would fly over the area to rescue any survivors of the earthquake. One day they found the only building that hadn't collapsed, so they helped the residents clean the area and rebuild the community. While they worked, 
Jisoo showed up and offered his services as a doctor, but after a few days he showed his true colors. Parents started to complain because their kids wouldn't come back after Jisoo took them and Yoon-ho confronted him about it. However Kwon and the rest of her team were secretly working with Jisoo, which Kwon demonstrated by shooting a friend. The guy just stood up again, and Jisoo said his experiments were humanity's only hope. Furious, Yoon-ho jumped on the doctor, only to be pulled back by her teammates. A fight ensued and after knocking a few teammates down, Yoon-ho tried shooting Jisoo, but Kwon opened fire first. Yoon-ho had no choice but to jump through the window and run away. After hearing all this, Ji-won and Nam-san agree to help Yoon-ho because they want to rescue Suna too, however they're going to need a plan to bypass security. Nearby in the ruins of a building, two gangs are making civilians fight to the death for fun and gambling, threatening to kill their loved ones if they don't obey. After another match ends with death, Leader Tiger asks the other gang if they have anything else to bet, which triggers an argument that escalates into a violent fight. Both gangs begin killing each other with no mercy, but nobody manages to land a single hit on Tiger, who has the most blood on his hands. One by one the gangsters fall to their deaths and when there are only a few members left, Nam-san arrives with the others and asks for Tiger. It turns out Nam-san and Tiger used to be boxing rivals, but Nam-san hurt him so badly that Tiger had to quit and now he wants revenge. Both gangs team up to attack the trio, but, thanks to Nam-san's and Yunho's training, it's easy for them to beat up a bunch of street fighters. Ji-won defends himself quite well too and manages to reach the cage to release all the captured civilians. When Nam-san easily defeats Tiger in just a few moves, all the other gangsters try to run away, but the team manages to catch a few so Nam-san can interrogate them. He asks them where they got the water as he punches them, causing Tiger to confess he's the one who makes deals with the building residents. He brings them children and in exchange they pay him with clean water, but he's only allowed to pass the barrier on delivery days, so Nam-san will have to plan around that. Meanwhile Suna's group arrives at the apartment building and they're shocked by how well organized it is. There are guards everywhere, solar panels providing electricity, and even vegetables growing in a small garden. The locals give them a warm welcome and Jisoo introduces himself as the leader, immediately offering bottles of clean water. Wanting to save some for her grandmother, Suna doesn't drink hers. Then she's assigned an apartment, where she's shocked to find supplies, clean clothes, and even running water. After changing, Suna asks about her grandmother, and a teacher informs her a ride is on the way to pick her up. Then Jisoo announces which teenagers got the better grades, and the families of the top four students get assigned to the nicest apartments on the eighth floor, get exempted from work, and are given a free meal pass. However when the teachers talk to the students and their families in private, it's revealed that only the children are sent to the eighth floor, while their families are sent to the basement where they must purify the water and bottle it up. They have to work long hours every day and they aren't allowed to see their kids again. In Jisoo's lab, Kwon eats an entire mouse while the teacher tells Jisoo that Suna and Yoon-ho are healthy and perfect for the experiments, so Jisoo reminds her to give them water. Afterward the teacher introduces the girls to the class and Suna is shocked by how all the other teens are in a constant dazed state and have a scar behind their ears. Suna continues to get suspicious when the teacher begins teaching them about how weak the human body is and how they must evolve to be able to survive without water. Soon the class becomes propaganda about Jisoo being the only savior and their duty to help him. Over lunchtime, Everyone is given a bottle of water and the teacher insists it's important to drink it, so Suna decides not to. Jisoo also shows up to give them a speech and chooses Ju Yi as his next helper. Suna asks about his grandmother again and is told she arrived very sick, so she'll be in the medical bay for a few days. When Jisoo reminds her to drink the water, Suna only pretends to do it. Afterward Jisoo tests his latest serum on Kwan, who is worried about the two agents that haven't returned yet. He wishes everyone could carry a serum injection at all times just in case, but Jisoo gives him a vague excuse against it. After Kwan leaves, it's revealed Jisoo is still working on healing his daughter. In the evening while everyone is asleep, Suna slips out of bed and sneaks around the building. When she hears people coming, she jumps over the balcony to hide just in time. In the basement, the soldiers are trying to send the day workers out to bring the night shift in, but Ju Yi's parents start protesting because they aren't allowed to see their daughter. To avoid a possible riot, Jisoo shows up and brings Ju Yi's parents to his lab, promising they'll see their kid. Back to Suna, she sneaks inside Jisoo's lab and looks at his notes, discovering he's been experimenting with reptiles to make the serum because of their regeneration skills. His first tests were done on younger people, and they all died. Then Suna opens a door and finds Ju Yi connected to a machine through a cut behind her ear. At that moment Jisoo arrives, so Suna rushes to hide. Ju Yi's parents freak out when they see her so Jisoo tries to explain this is for her own good, then to prove he loves kids, he shows them how he's been taking care of his own daughter. The parents are horrified to see only the upper body of the girl is left, and Jisoo is cruelly preserving her in a glass box that keeps her heart beating. Refusing to be part of this, the parents try to disconnect Ju Yi from the machine, but this only makes her have a seizure. Jisoo rushes to help her, but it's too late and sadly Ju Yi dies. Furious, Jisoo repeatedly stabs the father, and when the mother tries to escape, Quan shoots her. At that moment, Jisoo finally finds Suna and uses her as his next test subject. 
While connecting her to the machine, he explains he uses teenagers because their pituitary glands have a component he needs, which he transforms into a serum, thanks to the water they drink every day. When he activates the machine, Suna screams in pain. Meanwhile Nam San and the others arrive in Tiger's truck pretending to bring a delivery. The guard points out it's not delivery day and Tiger is unable to come up with an excuse, so the soldiers get suspicious and check the back of the truck. Suddenly Nam San knocks a guard out and speeds up, ignoring the soldiers opening fire to drive through them and the front gate. Quickly turning the truck, he brings down the watchtower and then crashes the vehicle right into the lobby. Tiger rushes to hide while Nam San, Jiwon, and Yunho open fire with the weapons they took from the gang. Soon a few soldiers come closer, so Yunho beats them down and opens the way for them to take the stairs. After shooting a lock, the trio enters an abandoned room and Yunho is horrified to find her teammates in a cell. When she frees them, she discovers the soldiers are now reptile-like zombies that immediately attack. Nam San quickly sabes Yunho and then the guys open fire to blow a few heads up. There are too many of them though and soon the soldiers come closer for a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Nam San and Jiwon do their best to defend themselves, but Yunho is in shock and can't hurt her friends. Thankfully Jiwon yells at her and makes her snap out of it, so Yunho jumps into action and begins decapitating zombies left and right. Working well as a team, the trio manages to kill all the soldiers until no enemy is left standing. At that moment Jisoo announces through the speakers that he'll let the trio live if they leave now. Using the intercom in the cell area, Nam San replies they won't give up and then destroys the device, hurting Jisoo's ear with the resulting screech. While Jisoo goes back to Suna to retrieve the serum from her body, the trio goes upstairs and blows up a door to kill all the soldiers on the other side. Soon backup arrives, so Nam San tells the others to go find Suna while he takes care of things here. Then Nam San shoots an extinguisher to create a bunch of smoke that he uses as cover while shooting the incoming guards. Once he runs out of bullets, he grabs his machete and goes into the corridor to kill the soldiers face to face, swiftly slashing through them with his machete and even taking their guns to shoot them down. When another group of soldiers comes after him, Nam San uses the weapons from the dead guys to kill them all in seconds. Afterward he goes to the basement and tells the workers to go out and find their children. Meanwhile Yun Ho and Jiwon also keep shooting soldiers as they make their way upstairs. There are too many of them coming, so Yun Ho stays to provide cover while Jiwon keeps going up. She combines her shooting and fighting skills to bring them all down, and soon only Quan is left. She fights him hand to hand, but he's a much better fighter and his body has the serum enhancements, so he's hard to knock down. After lots of struggle, Yun Ho manages to stab him in the foot and the eye, but Quan only reveals that underneath his skin he has lizard scales that protect him. Yun Ho tries attacking again, but Quan easily overpowers her and stabs her before throwing her off the balcony. On the upper floors, Ji Wan checks every room and eventually finds the classroom, where he quickly kills the guard. The teacher tries to hide, but Ji Wan takes her hostage so she can show him the way to the lab. Ji Wan also tells the students to run, but none of them even blink. On their way out, Ji Wan and the teacher are found by Quan, but Nam San also arrives and takes on the sergeant while the others leave. In the lab, Jisoo injects the new serum into his body and immediately feels sick because Suna didn't drink the water. Warts appear on Jisoo's body as he throws up, but before he can get revenge on Suna, Jiwon arrives with the teacher. Jisoo distracts him by threatening Suna and a soldier attacks Jiwon from behind to knock him down. Then Jisoo orders the teacher and the soldier to put his daughter in the briefcase while he retrieves all the tubes with the serum. Downstairs, Nam San is fighting Quan. Both of them are incredibly strong and keep throwing each other against various surfaces. Suddenly Quan grabs Nam San, who uses his opponent's speed and weight to throw him through the window. Quan keeps on holding onto Nam San to avoid falling, so Nam San impales his neck on the broken glass and decapitates him. While the working parents finally reunite with their kids outside, Nam San makes it to the lab and takes the soldier's gun to shoot her and the teacher. Jisoo ignores the teacher's pleas for help and escapes through the back door after dropping a grenade into the lab. Jiwon runs to the stretcher and turns it over with Suna on it, protecting them both from the explosion. The loud noise wakes Yun Ho up, who is alive after all. Now the lab is on fire, so Nam San uses a door to go through the flames and help the teens. Outside the building, the residents see Jisoo trying to escape and start beating him up for what he did to the kids. They also destroy all the serum tubes, but they step away when they see the doctor's face transforming. Furious, Jisoo grabs a weapon and opens fire like a maniac, killing a bunch of residents but also accidentally shooting his suitcase in the process. Medicine starts leaking out so Jisoo rushes to open it but it's too late, now his daughter is dead for good. Suddenly he pukes because his body is getting worse, and when the heroes show up, Jisoo opens fire again, so Nam San shoots him a couple of times to finally kill him. As if to celebrate their victory, the sky goes dark and it starts raining. Yunho announces she'll stay here to help the others rebuild, and Nam San and the teens begin walking home. On their way back, the guys take Suna to her grandmother's grave, where she falls to her knees in tears.